Good morning, guys. It's just uh, Ross from Phoenix Elite MMA and Conditioning here. Um, some of you have met me yet, uh, met me so far, and some of you haven't. Um, some of you attended the seminar on uh, Wednesday night, and some of you are still to attend. Uh, but my introduction is, uh, along with Laura, I'm uh, one of the head coaches and uh, owner of Phoenix Elite, and um, be helping you on your journey for the next six weeks. Um, we just wanted to do a quick video, I just wanted to do a quick video uh, based on, on mindset and based on kind of the, the mental approach and the mental benefits uh, of being strong during the course of this period. For those who have already been to the, to the seminar would, would recognize some of these phrases, but one of the things I, I wanted to, to discuss is um, when we're dealing with a six-week program, um, effectively uh, a month and a half of your life not a great deal of, of time frame, not a great deal of time commitment given by you. We can get you phenomenal results, but it, because it's such a short time frame, there's very little room for, for human error or for slip-ups like you normally would do. Um, in a 12-week or a 6 months or whatever, when I mean, we're dealing with athletes and clients that we work with, there's a little bit more room for error. So if people have a mess up and a, an ugly Friday or, or just a, a bad couple of days, we can to be able to recover from that because there's a little bit of that, that, that kind of leeway. But when you're dealing with six weeks, there's a very small window um, of, of potential kind of um, slip-ups. Um, and one of the things we, that's become abundant already on the Facebook forums and for the emails that we're getting and whatnot um, uh, is this potential threat of, of mindset becoming your enemy. We do seminars and we do talks on this quite a lot. Um, Mindset is such a critical part of you achieving your goals. Um, all the, the tools can be placed out in front of you, the training, nutrition, all that sort of stuff. But if you don't get your mindset rectified and your mindset in the correct place, um, then basically it, it doesn't matter what resources and tools you have, that the failure is always going to be your most readily available option. Um, you know, you, you hear these, these cheesy lines and these, these cheesy kind of motivational speeches where they say, oh, failure is not an option. Well, as the the, uh, the 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 charming Chael Sonnen once said, failure unfortunately is the most readily available option. It's it's easy to fail. That's why most people do it. But we fail because of our mindset more so than any other time. Ninety nine percent of the time, our mindset is what causes it causes us to fail. Specifically, when we're talking about nutrition and and body composition and fitness goals. One of the things I talk about in the seminar is a history. We create a history. We we're, we're creatures of habit. Uh, you get up in the morning and you go through the same routine. You put your socks and shoes on exactly the same way you do every morning. You get out of the door at exactly the same time. You go to work, you sit at your desk and you go through the same routine. You buy your coffee from the same place, you so forth and so on. You create these habits. And it goes far beyond that. It, it's, it's psychological as well, as much as anything else. So if we create a pattern of failure when it comes to nutrition and diets, then that pattern will repeat until we choose to break it or until we do something to break it. When I say a pattern of failure of diets, if you're one of these people, um, and this is not an insult in any way, shape, or form, this is, this is mainstream peddling this stuff to you. If you're one of these people who's traditionally sought diet after diet, training plan after training plan, and your main decision is based on how uh, easy it looks, or how delicious it looks, or how whatever, the, whatever your motivational is, chances are you're picking it for the wrong reason. We don't promise a quick fix, nor do we pro promise a fluffy approach to it. We train hard, and we're disciplined with our eating. And one of the things I'm seeing already, which is one of these key indicators of setting yourself up for failure, is these questions and emails we're getting on the forum in regards to, you know, treats, paleo treats, healthy treats, what type of sugar alternative can I have in my coffee, what kind of sugar alternative um, am I allowed to use during this course of the time. The short answer, the realistic answer, if we wanted to be really blunt, is none. Um, but we understand this is a learning process and we do want this to be a lifestyle afterwards. But in this six week period of time, if your first thought before, and we've not even started this yet, you guys are doing the class, we don't even start till Monday, and you guys are already starting to look for treats, desserts, and soft options, then chances are you're setting yourself up for failure. If your mindset is already focused on what delicious celebratory meal you're going to have at the end of the six weeks, then you're setting yourself up for failure. If you're already putting most of your time and effort into researching what treat, what paleo dessert you can have on a nightly basis or every couple of nights or what delicious snacks you can make, chances are you're setting yourself up for failure and we do not want that. As I said at the beginning, small room for error. So if you do not have to have a treat, if you do not have to have a dessert, then don't. 
Don't touch it. Don't look for it. Put your first and foremost energy and expectation into how I can get my eating in control, how I can get the best out of my good, clean, wholesome food. That should be your first priority. Do not look for things outside of the books that we give you. We're working with a number of different protocols, and yet again, I explain that in a seminar for those who haven't come in yet, um, who haven't done seminar yet. And yes, we're working by a principle called um, If It Fits Your Macros, but there's a big difference between a clean macro and a dirty macro. And what I mean by that is if you're consuming sugar on a high level, then, excuse my language, you're fucking your system up and you're fucking yourself over. Sugar is sugar. It doesn't matter if it's stevia, agave, honey, brown sugar, whatever the case may be. There's a misconception out there that stevia and all these other uh, all sugar alternatives are better for you. The reality is your body responds in exactly the same way no matter what that stimulant is. Your body will recognize agave and stevia almost identically to the way if you had consumed sugar anyway. That's the reality of it. There is some other health benefits, yes, I'll admit that, to having stevia over a, a spoonful of white sugar. There's less of an insulin spike, there's less of those, uh, those items, yes, but they still respond fundamentally the same way. So sugar is sugar no matter how you have it. It doesn't matter if it's a piece of fruit, a jar of honey, or a big spoonful of white sugar that you got out of some processed plant. Uh, doesn't make a difference. So when you take that into consideration and you're thinking about these decisions, um, just realize that, you know, it doesn't matter if it's honey that's in your recipe or sugar in your recipe or crack cocaine in your fucking recipe, the reality is it's still bad for you. So don't focus on that. And here's why it's bad and here why it's not a good, a good mindset. If you're anything like 99% of the population out there that are not athletes, when you have one dessert, it sets you mentally up for the next time you have that dessert. And chances are if you're having a bad week or a shitty week, you being pissed off by your boss, your boyfriend or your girlfriend is giving you fucking grief, then chances are that's what you're going to turn to. And I'm not going to even go into emotional eating. But if you have a plate full of treats in your fridge that you've made, and I don't care if they're paleo treats, a treat is a treat. You have one, you've had a shitty week, chances you're going to have two. Next thing you know, you find yourself going to the fridge just randomly throughout the week and having one of those. And you've broken the pattern of success. Um, and you create these negative cycles where you actually become more and more comfortable with breaking your discipline. You become more and more comfortable with accepting failure. And this is a pattern we've created before. So yet again, just like I've made to most of the other groups, and, uh, and Laura and I have said to a lot of the other guys we've dealt with in the past, here's my challenge. For this six weeks, for this six weeks, um, by all means research it. But here for the six weeks, I do not want you to have a single dessert or a single treat. Fuck the dessert, fuck the treat. Focus on how good you're going to feel and how good you're going to look at the end of the six weeks. Focus on the fact that you're going to get the body results and at least start the journey in a big way to where you physically want to be in 2004. We advertise this product as basically making this a breakthrough year. Make it a breakthrough year by fucking the desserts off, getting rid of the sugar, get rid of the shit, and stop focusing on that and instead focusing on good wholesome food that's going to fuel you the right way and give you the body that you want, give you the, the feeling that you want at the end of this. That's my challenge to you. That's our challenge to you. So for all those guys who are spending hours Googling paleo desserts and figuring out which is better out of honey, sugar, and all the other crap out there, simple answer is none. Challenge has been laid down. Up to you guys if you want to take it or not. But if you want the best out of the six weeks, focus on the good. Focus on being focused and driven the entire time and disciplined and fuck the desserts off. Anyway, guys, I'm looking forward to dealing, uh, training with you guys. Looking forward to being part of your guys' journey. I know Laura and Nat and the other guys are all looking forward to the to kicking this year off with a, with a fantastic group of people. From the forums and from the emails, you all seem like a fantastic bunch. Uh, really good guys who are in the same sort of mindset as what we like to have in our gym, in, in our community and in our family. Uh, and it's going to be a fantastic year. Anyway, um, have a great day. Enjoy the weekend. If you need to have one last, uh, you know, um, kind of rethink of your of your cupboard and your fridge or whatever, and you need to do a clean out, do that stuff. Get yourself in the right mindset, going for ready for Monday. Clean your house out. Get rid of temptation. Fill your fridge full of good wholesome foods. Focus on that, and we'll start kicking butt as of next week. Have a great day, guys, and I look forward to seeing you all very very soon. Take care.